the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. For hearts that burn with hope. Welcome. It is, must be, if we're here with you, it must be Wednesday evening or whenever you tune in. That's the beauty of this. Uh, uh, we we broadcast this on uh, Wednesday, God, God willing, and we broadcast it on Wednesday, April 17th. But you might watch it on the 18th or the 19th or the 20th or Mar or, or um, May 7th or whatever. Uh, so that's the beauty of the modern technology. But welcome. We're glad you're with us. And uh, we're not going to delay too much this evening. We know uh, that you're here to uh, find the meaningful worship and songs and scripture and message that we have for you. So we're going to get right with it this evening. So uh, we're going to move into our prayer, and then we'll be back for our uh, scripture and message. Sing along. Well, I found this prayer this week, and being that spring is springing here in Ohio, 
Uh, we've got the red buds in bloom. The tulips are blooming. The the uh, uh, hyacinths are all but finished blooming, as are the daffodils. And so uh, uh, I just thought this would be a good uh, prayer for today. I used it Sunday uh, in our brick-and-mortar worship at Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church. And... Uh, uh, I liked it so much that I thought I'd share it with you this evening. For those of you who join us at both uh, this uh, Wednesday evening and Sunday, this will be a little bit of a repeat for you. But I hope you liked it well enough that you'll uh, hear it. We're going to scroll the prayer, prayer of joys and concerns again uh, this week. Uh, we've had some positive feedback on that. We're trying to slow the uh, the scrolling down a little bit and duplicate it. So if you miss it the first go around, you'll see it uh, in the second time around. So uh, gradually we'll work through this and and get it so that it works for everybody. So so be patient with us. Let us pray. Righteous God, who ordains the rise and fall of the sun and moon and the ebb and flow of the snows and streams of the earth, life-sustaining God, who sets the warblers and the wrens to feed fat on the crimson pods of the maple trees, save us, Lord. Save our woods, our sibling creatures, our sustaining water, the heat rises and the rain no longer fits in its securing cycle. It no longer feeds the rivers as it once did. We are unsure. We no longer know the season by season refilling of the rivers and lakes and where the birds flew above our Lord. We do not know this land as Jesus did when he walked on earth. Lord, you have heard our prayers uh, that we have shared on this screen. Listen to the prayers we now speak with our hearts, those silent prayers of the people of your creation as we raise our hopes to you. Shining God, turn your face to us, your people, your community. You hear our cry. We repent of the lures that led us to doubt, for they are worthless. We seek restoration of the cycles you ordained, of snow and rain, of the wren and the dove. We step away from sin. We refresh ourselves in your righteousness. We rest secure and are assured in you. And to you we raise the prayer taught to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to move right into our uh, scripture and then our message, so stick with us. Our scripture this evening is from... The Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, and the 9th through the 18th verses. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. 
These returned and reported it to the rest, but they didn't believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. These are the very words of God for the people of God. And your response is, thanks be to God. Let's move into our message. Well, in our message today, notice from our scripture that Jesus rebuked the disciples for not believing those among them who had seen Jesus alive following his resurrection. But that didn't, but even though he rebuked them, he still knew that they could carry out his uh, will for them as his disciples. And so he gave them what has come to be known as the Great Commission. Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world, telling everyone that he had paid the penalty for sin and that those who believe in him can be forgiven and live eternally with God. Christians today in all parts of the world are telling the good news to people who haven't heard about Jesus. The power that carries missionaries around the world and sets Christ's church in motion is the faith that comes directly from the resurrection. Do you ever feel as though you don't have the skill or the determination to witness for Christ. You have to personally realize that Jesus rose from the dead and lives for you today. As you grow in your relationship with Christ, he will give you both the opportunities and the inner strength to give the message that he wants you to give to the world. It's not about uh, the water. Let me put it this way. The water of baptism does not save you. It does not cleanse you. But God's grace that is, that's accepted through faith in Jesus Christ is the saving grace that you receive through baptism. Because of Jesus' response to the criminal on the cross— who died with him, we know that it's possible to be saved without being baptized. At least biblical scholars uh, don't believe that he was probably baptized. Uh, baptism alone without faith doesn't guarantee that a person will be going to heaven. In other words, just being baptized and doing nothing else in your life uh, doesn't uh, doesn't guarantee you a spot in one of those mansions that Jesus has gone to prepare for us in heaven. Uh, those who refuse to accept Jesus as their Savior will be condemned, regardless of whether or not they have been baptized. Now, in that statement, I believe is the hope for those who are, never have the opportunity to hear the story of Jesus. And there are those in different parts of the world where they've been for one reason or another isolated or insulated against uh, hearing the good news of Jesus, either by distance or remoteness or just the fact that there are others around them that are preventing that message from getting to them. And I think therein lies the hope for those people 
because uh, Jesus died for them. And just like he forgave the sinner on the cross next to him without being baptized or without spending his life uh, serving the Lord, um, he can do that for those who uh, who believe uh, at the last minute or even those who have not had the opportunity to hear about him. He knows that. Uh, there are times when God intervenes miraculously to protect his followers. Occasionally, he even gives them special powers. For example, Paul handled uh, the scripture we had today, mentioned poisonous snakes. Paul did handle a poisonous snake safely. That's in Acts 28, verse 5, if you want to read it. And the disciples healed the sick. You can read that in Matthew 10, verse 1, and some other places in the New Testament. But that does not mean, however, that we should test God by putting ourselves in dangerous situations or try and tempt the laws of nature. Remember in the testing of Jesus by Satan. Uh, Jesus quoted the scriptures as saying, uh, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so uh, we should not go out and run out in a busy intersection or uh, drive 100 miles an hour down a curvy road and say, well, if God's real, he'll protect me, uh, because we should not tempt God or the laws of nature, I might add. And definitely nobody should build a religion on a little bit of Scripture. There's a group of people in this country who have snakes in their worship, and there have actually been several deaths connected with people who have thought, well, my faith will save me so I can handle this poisonous snake and nothing will happen to me. Uh, that's tempting the Lord. And uh, God did not intend for us to use that as a base for a faith uh, or a religion. Um, God calls us to live as new citizens in the eternal kingdom and to witness by word and service to God's love and power. In other words, we, we tell the word and we show the word through things that we do by helping someone, by uh, 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 going on a mission trip, whatever that might be. Uh, our witness should center on Jesus and not some kind of superhero stunt. If, G if God intends for you to heal someone, he'll give you that message in no uncertain terms and give you the power to do that. But we shouldn't always assume that we have that power uh, because God gives that and God uh, can choose not to give that depending on the circumstances. Uh, when Jesus ascended into heaven, his physical appearance left the disciples. And uh, Jesus, in other words, he went into heaven, so the disciples didn't see him anymore. They probably had an image of him in their head, but uh, just as we do for someone who's close to us, who passes on, uh, Jesus sitting at God's right hand signifies the confirmation of his authority as, God's, uh, as God and his coronation as king. We should always remember that our belief is in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one, who loves us unconditionally, by the way. And as we leave this devotion this evening, let us remember that wherever we go, God's love accompanies us. We're never farther away, as the scriptures say, uh, God's never farther away than our right hand. So, uh, and again, the mathematical, uh, the uh, God's math that defies earthly math 
is that we can get farther away from God than God will ever get from us. So don't forget that. He's always with you, whether you're with him or not. Uh, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the reassurance that your son has given us that uh, uh, you love us and that you will give us what we need to follow that great commission to go into all the world and make disciples. Now give us the courage to do so. And we just pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We're going to move into our final song, and then we'll be back for our benediction. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. the God of the mountain is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's not Nothing is better 
Well, we hope that you have uh, enjoyed your time with us this evening, that uh, most of all, that you have found what you come seeking. And hopefully that'll be that peace that passes all understanding that Jesus offers to each and every one of us. That's our goal here at Sanctuary. And so now please receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Remember, we love you and God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next time, remember, let God's light always shine on your pathway. Good night and God bless.